Good morning, everyone. Wanted to share a devotional thought for this morning, um, but before I do, I wanted to show you uh, this. This is going to be working on constitutional law, and um, for our next segment. And I think it would be real important if you don't have uh, <clears throat> your own copy of the Declaration of Independence you know, and the Constitution. Really good. Really want to encourage you to get out there, take a look at that. Um, try to get one if you can. Sometimes you can find these free uh, from different places. But uh, anyway, be really, really helpful. I want to share an excerpt from The Spirit of America, which uh, we've been reading through um, as a text uh, for some of our devotional thoughts. Um, this particular uh, excerpt is from James Madison, wrote this. And he wrote this in the National Gazette, one of the popular um, newspapers at the time. Um, and it was entitled, A Property in Our Rights. And I think it's really, really important to understand that Madison believed that property rights included both our conscience, our thought processes, our speech. Um, it involved much more than just um, the right to own a plot of land or a home or whatnot. So these are the words of James Madison. This term property in its particular application means that domination which one man claims and exercises over the external things of the world in exclusion of every other individual. In its larger and juster meaning, it embraces everything to which a man may attach a value and have a right, and which leaves to everyone else the like advantage. In the former sense, a man's land or merchandise or money is called his property. In the latter sense, a man has property in his opinions and the free communication of them. He has a property of peculiar value in his religious opinions and the profession and practice dictated by them. He has a property very dear to him in the safety and liberty of his person. He has an equal property in the free use of his faculties and free choice of the objections on which to employ them. In a word, a man is said to have a right to his property. He may be equally said to have a property in his rights. Where an excess of power prevails, property of no sort is duly respected. No man is safe in his opinions, his person, or his faculties, or his possessions. In other words, when government exceeds its bounds, people just aren't safe anymore. Whether they can't speak their truth, they can't speak their own mind, they can't speak their convictions, so on and so forth. Back to the words of Madison. Where there is an excess of liberty, the effect is the same, though from an opposite end. Government is instituted to protect property of every sort, as well that which lies in the various rights of individuals, as that which the term particularly expresses. This being the end of government, that alone is a just government, which impartially secures to every man whatever is his own. Conscience is the most sacred of all property. Other property, depending in part on positive law, the exercise of that being a natural and inalienable right. To guard a man's house as his castle, to pay public and enforce private debts with the most exact faith can give no title to invade a man's conscience, which is more sacred than his castle. If there be a government, then, which prides itself on maintaining the inviolability of property, which provides that none shall be taken directly even for public use without indemnification to the owner, and yet directly violates the property which individuals have in their opinions, their religion, their persons, and their faculties, nay more, which indirectly violates their property in their actual possessions, in the labor that acquires their daily substance, and in the hallowed remnant of time which ought to relieve their fatigues and soothe their cares, the inference will, be, will have been anticipated that such a government is not a pattern for the United States. In the, if the United States means to obtain or deserve the full praise due to wise and just governments, they will equally respect 
the rights of property and the property in rights. The words of James Madison, I think, ring true even today, where more and more we find the overarching implications of a government <clears throat> that seeks to control and limit liberties of people. And um, I think this is a great word, um, helpful word, from one of, our, one of our founding fathers as it pertains to property, both in our intellect, in our conscience, in our faith, and of course in our land and in our possessions.